We're back live in studio with Samuel Azerzer in the business headquarters of Radio Shalom, 1650 AM in Montreal with the Money and Business Show. You have questions about your personal finances? You need advice in making sound financial decisions? Samuel and his guests are ready to take your call at 514-738-4100, extension 200. And now, back to the Money and Business Show. Welcome to our show here at the Money and Business Show, Radio Shalom Shi JRS 1650 AM in Montreal. Today's topic is how U.S. tax rules impact Americans in Canada and what Americans and Canadians need to avoid the wrath of Uncle Sam. But first, uh, we have David Anderson, is the Member of Parliament of Cypress Hills, Grassland, Saskatchewan, and the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Natural Resource and the Minister of Agriculture and agri-food for the Canadian Wheat Board. David has lived and farmed out of Frontier, Saskatchewan, for most of his life. David studied at the University of Regina, where he obtained a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science. He uh, then went on to complete a Master's uh, Divinity at the Canadian Theological uh, Seminary in 1990. So we welcome, how are you David, and welcome to our program. Oh, I'm very happy to be here today. It's a beautiful day where we are. I hope it is where you are as well. Yes, we're uh, actually it's a very beautiful day here in Montreal. But I want to thank you for uh, you know coming on. I know you have a busy schedule out there. And uh, last week, uh, the Honorable uh, Joe Oliver completed a successful visit to the United States to promote uh, you know our mutual interest in jobs and in the economy through the approval of the uh, Keystone uh, XL pipeline. Uh, the responsible development of Canada's energy resource, including the oil sand, is a critical. Uh, I know it's very critical to the Canadian economy and ongoing funding for the essential social programs like the health and education. But NDP leader Thomas Mulcair is also traveling in the U.S. to meet with American officials in Washington. What message is he bringing there? Well, uh, I think the message he's bringing there is one that's not being well received uh, across Canada and particularly in the West. In fact, uh, Premier Wallace Saskatchewan had the question this morning uh, and asking uh, Mr. Mulcair why he's betraying Canadian interests. So uh, there's been some strong words uh, spoken. Uh, Mr. Mulcair seems to be uh, down there to try to, uh, to get his message across. But certainly uh, we think that that message is not a good one for Canadians. Uh, he, is, uh, he has been talking against uh, resource development, and I think he's actually been misleading people with some of his statements. You know, you know, concerning here Canadian jobs, exports, uh, you know, into diversified markets, you know, specifically with the Keystone Pipeline, doesn't he understand that? Well, we really need to uh, to work towards two things. One is is uh, strengthening our economy, and our, we have a. Um, you know, one of the most abundant sources of natural resources across this country, uh, and we believe that we can uh, we can develop that resource, we can create jobs, uh, create prosperity across this country. Uh, the second part of it is, while we're doing that, we need to protect the environment. And certainly, uh, the Keystone Pipeline has been the focus of a lot of attention. Uh, but the State Department last week basically came out and said this pipeline is not going to contribute uh, to uh, any kind of environmental problems. Uh, the uh, resource is going to be developed anyway, and they recommended that the U.S. approve it. So we're hoping that the uh, the president would listen to to the State Department report uh, rather than to Mr. Mulcair. Uh, David, the NDP is committed to renegotiating NAFTA and, and has opposed almost every other trade agreement uh, still with the tens of thousands of Canadian jobs at stake. This would be uh, you know, a time for Mr. Mulcair you know, to finally get behind can, you know, Canada's national interest. Well, I think in this situation it was a, it was a good uh, time to do that. He didn't have to go down there and say right. that he loved government, but we don't expect that, but he certainly does need to get behind these national projects and uh, that are going to be so important in the future. It's interesting, now he's talking about how he supports east-to-west pipelines in Canada, uh, but he doesn't like north-south ones, so I'm not sure uh, how far they've moved off of their concern about things like the environmental issues, but he's, re he's being entirely inconsistent here. Is that the, you're talking about the, the pipeline, uh, I think, what is it, number nine, I think from Montreal uh, east-west, is that it? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, there's a pipeline that runs from east to west, and they've talked about extending that from Montreal to the Maritimes. Right. Mr. Mulcair seems to be uh, very enthused about that. We have about 80 pipelines already crossing the Canada-U.S. border with uh, oil and gas, um, and Mr. Mulcair seems to you know, have picked this one that he wants to stop. But we believe that uh, Keystone is a good project. Uh, it goes right through my riding, by the way, and the pipes are sitting here ready to go in the ground. And safely. It's been delayed because of the, the uh, delay in the United States, but we'd love to see that get done as quickly as possible. David, why is there such a, a huge difference between the butamen coming out of the ground of Alberta and, and the price of West 
Texas crude oil. I, I, there's, if I looked just lately, there's about a $35 difference here. Why, why is that? Can you explain that? Well, this is something that uh, people weren't really aware of, and uh, we, we have been on the Natural Resource Committee for a few years. We were talking about this a couple of years ago, but there has been a discount of Canadian oil simply because we don't have more than one market, and so uh, we're, we're marketing south, um, and they don't, they're they not paying world price for it. We need uh, to get the pipelines uh, to the west, and actually one to the east would help as well so that we begin to sell onto the world market rather than just to one customer. Uh, Keystone would help with that because it would bring up the production and uh, would, uh, would then would move that oil down to the Gulf Coast, which would then you know would make it more susceptible to world price as well. So we need to diversify these uh, markets, the pipelines. It seems that the NDP has, has taken on the pipelines in an attempt to try to stop the development of the resource. That's a very good uh, answer because shouldn't we be selling our butamine to, to, to overseas customers, you know, to diversify in case the U.S. goes into a, a recession? Um, it w that would be a great idea to, to sell it to China, to Japan, right? Well, that is really the discussion around a different pipeline, which is the Northern Gateway. And uh, there also is a Kinder Morgan uh, pipeline that runs down through B.C. Presently, they've uh, talked about expanding, and it's been interesting because the NDP seems to want to oppose every one of those projects and yet claim that they also uh, support the development of the industry and support the development of jobs in Canada. And you can't have both. You either have to uh, develop the pipeline structure, so you've got the transportation method to move this resource out, or we are going to lose those jobs and lose that extra development that would take place. There, there is a, I think it was a protest just lately uh, in Washington, um, if I'm not mistaken, about, you know, they, they were against the Keystone XL pipeline. Uh, but there's a strong majority of Americans who do support now the Keystone XL pipeline. Well, I think as people, you know, get a little bit more educated, they understand that there is not an issue with this. We've got a pipeline network all over North America, and as I mentioned, we've got 80 pipelines that cross our border between the United States and Canada right now. So we have pipelines. They have proven to be the safest way of transporting these materials over the years. Uh, we also transport by rail, and that's a safe way uh, as well. But pipelines are the most efficient way. Uh, people who take the time to really consider the facts will come to the same conclusions, and that is that this is a good way to move this product. And you're right, because uh, last year, I, w I wish I had a clip on uh, the Honorable Joe Oliver, who was on my show. He said the same thing, the safest way is pipelines. Well, Minister Oliver, I believe, has done an excellent job on this file. And I should just mention, I think it's uh, the discount on our oil right now is costing us $50 million. That's $50 million a day uh, in the discount to the world price. That becomes a significant amount of, of uh, revenue and a significant amount of tax revenue by the end of the year. So all Canadians are paying the price because we don't have access uh, to these other markets. So it's not just Western Canada that benefits. Uh, certainly uh, Bay Street provides a lot of the financing. The Line uh, 9 going east-west would, would benefit uh, Quebec and Atlantic Canada. Uh, this is a, really a, a national issue, and I think we need to be uh, supportive of it. And, and you're right. The NDP is definitely missing the point over here. But... Let me get this straight, uh, David. Uh, we need the pipelines to get access to the world market. The more access we have, the more opportunity we have. And the more opportunity we have, the higher the bitumen oil. That's Economics 101, right? Right. That, that you'll get a higher price for it as you are able to access more markets. And that's really what the, uh, the issue is here. The, early on, the opposition to this has really been we want to try to stop the development of the pipelines because then we can choke off uh, the, the resource development, and uh, we've got uh, NGOs who are, are saying that, that we need to cut the, cut the uh, line so that the, the product can't get to market, and then they believe that that's how they're going to, uh, to limit the development of the resource. The reality is this is a world-class resource. It's one that Canadians depend on. Uh, the natural resources sector uh, represents 20% of our GDP, employs over 1.5 million people, and certainly uh, impacts every Canadian across this country in a positive way. And over the next 10 years, we've got, I think it's uh, something along the lines of 600 major projects with uh, somewhere around $650 billion that will be coming in in terms of capital investment. So this will be a huge, uh, you know, have a huge impact in our economy over the next uh, decade or two. I want to thank you, David. David Anderson is a member of Parliament for Cypress Hills, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Natural Resource and the Minister of Agriculture and Agri-Food for the Canadian Wheat Board. I want to thank you for taking some time and uh, joining our program, Money Business Show. Thank you, David. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you.